In this session, we are going to differentiate between methods and strategies for solving a basic numeracy question on CSAT. So, if I look at questions of basic numeracy, then these questions can be solved by several methods. Each type of question can be solved by various methods. One of these methods is called a strategy for that particular question. And strategy is the best method to solve a particular type of question. So strategy is only one. So what is a strategy? A strategy is a method which is the best way to solve a particular type of basic basic question. It is a method which avoids confusion. If you are somebody who's worked hard for basic numeracy on CSAT, by the time your exam comes, you will reach a stage where you would know several methods to solve the same kind of a question. And in the examination hall, I do not want a situation where you look at a particular question, have three methods of solving that particular question in your mind, and you have to juggle between deciding which particular method is to be used to solve this particular question. So, if you have a clear strategy for solving a certain kind of question, then you can avoid that confusion which will actually give you butterflies in the stomach and make you more tense. Because there is only one strategy for a certain kind of question that has to be clear to you. A strategy is a method which has the highest accuracy rate and you have to choose the strategy or your teacher has to help you with that. Uh, it has fewer steps of calculation. Now why is fewer steps of calculation really important for a particular strategy or a particular method which is supposed to be a strategy? The reason is Every step of calculation is an invitation for you to make a silly mistake. You have a chance of making a silly mistake at every step of calculation. So if there are fewer steps of calculation in your strategy for solving a particular kind of question, then automatically you are going to have a greater amount of accuracy. And if you are using fewer steps of calculation, then automatically it is going to take less amount of time. So both advantages are there. Moreover, uh, the calculations which are used in case of a strategy, they need to be less complicated so that the chances of making mistakes on those steps should also be on the lower side. And automatically, uh, it takes less time to solve as a result and there is less chance of you making a silly mistake. But this is not enough for a certain method to become a strategy. A strategy is a method which is easier for you to learn. And then you practice it on a certain number of questions and you perfect this particular strategy and do not deviate from it. So, let's look at a particular question. To understand this. <clears throat> this is a simple question from the topic of percentages. Uh, the question's language says, in an examination, Suresh got 60% of maximum marks, which were 36 more than the passing marks. Anjali got 40% of maximum marks, which were 20 marks more than the passing marks. And you are supposed to find the passing marks in this examination. Try solving the question yourself, students online. Who are watching this video, I want you to pause this video at this particular stage and try solving this question. Give it a try at least. Okay, let's start. Let's look at the first method of solving this particular question. In the first method which is taught to you back in your school days, you are supposed to take maximum marks equal to x and passing marks equal to y. This is the method which your schools must have taught you. And uh, once you have done this, then you look at marks of Suresh. Suresh ended up getting 60% of the maximum marks, which is Suresh got 60% of maximum marks, which are x. So Suresh got 0.6x. And Suresh got marks which are 36 more than the passing marks. So Suresh ended up getting y, this y, passing marks, y plus 36 marks. So 0.6x is equal to y plus 36. Anjali on the other hand ended up getting 40% of the maximum marks which is 0.4x and these marks were 20 more than the passing marks. So 0.4x is equal to y plus 20. Once you get these similar looking equations, this would remind you of something which you must have studied back in your class 8, uh, 9th and 10th and uh, you were taught something called as simultaneous equations. So the method which you are going to use to attempt this, this particular question, the method which has been taught to you back in your school days, is a simultaneous equation method. And this is the most basic of simultaneous equation method. So what we do out here is, that we have, because I have got two variables in these equations, so I need to remove one variable so that the other variable can be found out. So what we can do out here is, 
we can go in for subtracting the second equation from the first one. As a result of this, the y will get cancelled because y minus y will be equal to 0. Uh, 0.6x minus 0.4x will be equal to uh, 0.2x and 36 minus 20 will be equal to 16. So I end up getting after subtraction 0.2x is equal to 16. Once I've got this value, I simplify it further. And on further simplification, x's value is calculated as 16 upon 0.2x, 0.2, which is equal to 80. And 80 is the maximum marks. So this x is equal to 80. Once I found this, then I proceed ahead with picking up any one of these two equations that I can get the value of passing marks. Now, Suresh ended up getting 60% of maximum marks. And we know that maximum marks is equal to 80. So 0.6 multiplied by 80 is equal to y plus 36. I make that equation, which is 0 0.6 multiplied by 80 is equal to y plus 36. And on simplification further, I end up getting y is equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by 80 minus 36. On further simplification, I end up getting y's value equal to 12 and uh, a becomes the answer. This is the method which has been taught to us back in our school days. And if you look at this whole method, you can see how many calculations are there. At every step of this calculation, you can end up making a silly mistake. Moreover, when you write it down in a hurry during in an examination situation, then a uh, 0.6 can look like a 0.8 or a 1 also at times. So you can end up decreasing your accuracy if you're using this longish method. Moreover, you have to keep one more thing in your mind, and that is when you are attempting this question or any other question back in your, in your uh, in the examination, you do not have to write everything. All of this stuff was supposed to be written for your school teachers who demanded it. Instead of writing all of this stuff, you need to write and in shorthand. So during an examination, you do not need to write everything uh, in a stepwise manner and in detail, which is given here. Instead, you could possibly end it, end up writing it in this manner, in shorthand manner. This is a desirable way. Not this way. This is a better way. But because this particular method of solving the question has so many steps of calculation and there is a chance of you making a mistake at any of these steps, that is the reason why this particular method, which is a conventional method of solving, is not the recommended method for basic numeracy questions. But this is just one method so far. This is not a desirable method. Let's look at a second method. In case of this second method, we start with the same assumption that let maximum marks be equal to x and passing marks be equal to y. We end up getting the first two equations. Once you've got the first two equations, then the next step which you take is uh, you still use simultaneous equations, but while you're using simultaneous equations, if you're somebody who's better at simultaneous equations, then you can do a more complicated thing at, at the next step uh, and get your answer slightly faster. So, if you multiply the first equation by 6 and you multiply the second equation by 4, then the value of x in case of both the equation will become the same. It will become uh, 6 multiplied by 0.4 will become 2.4x and uh, 0.6 multiplied by 4 will again be 2.4x. This is something which can be done and then we go in for subtracting. We subtract the second equation from the first one and when we, when we do that, we will end up getting 2.4x is equal to 6y plus 120 and uh, we have to subtract from this the second equation which again becomes 2.4x is equal to 4y plus 144. When we do this subtraction, we will end up getting 0 is equal to 2y minus 24 or on further simplification we get 2y is equal to 24 or y is equal to 12 and you end up getting your passing marks which is 12. So you can do this, use this method also in order to solve this question and this particular part is an even more complicated uh, calculation and there is a greater chance of you making a mistake at this particular stage plus you need a lot of practice to even think about doing this particular part. So there is more chances of making a mistake in case of using this second method. This is still a conventional method of solving this question and it is not a recommended way of solving this question. So let's look at the third way of solving this question.
In the third method, we try to understand the difference of marks of the two students. Suresh got 60%, Anjali got 40%. So 60% minus 40% is equal to 20% of maximum marks. Once you realize this, then understand that 20% of maximum marks is equal to 16. How is it equal to 16? Because 36 minus 20 is equal to 16. The difference of their marks. Once I've got this equation, then I look at Anjali's marks. Anjali's marks are 40% of the maximum marks. This 16 is equal to 20% of maximum marks. So all I need to do is multiply the 16 by 2 and I have end up getting Anjali's marks which is equal to 32. We know that Anjali got 20 marks more than the passing marks. Which means all I need to do is I have to subtract 20 from a 32 and I end up getting 12 is the answer which is this one. If you look at this particular method it does not involve complicated calculations. The calculations which are present here, these calculations you cannot make a mistake upon. You cannot make a mistake upon subtracting 40 from a 60 to get a 20 percent or subtracting a 20 from a 36 to get a 16 or multiplying a 16 by a 2 to get a 32 or you cannot make a mistake on subtracting 20 from 32 to get the final answer which is 12. This method which has less steps, less complicated calculations is a smart way of doing this kind of a question. This is called as strategy. So we saw three methods of solving the same question. Out of these three methods, either you have to identify the strategy yourself or else you take somebody's help, a teacher's help probably, to understand what would be the right strategy for solving that kind of a question. Understand the difference between how the same question was solved by three methods and why the third method is considered to be the strategy which you should be using. This is the only method that you should be using to solve this kind of a question.